I'm Pete DiGiorgio, the Federal Account Executive for Security Onion Solutions, a uh, retired Army cyber officer. I guess what I forgot to say before is, is yeah, I, I was a helicopter pilot, um, joined the Army, went to the United States Military Academy, um, got a degree in computer engineering, and then instantly decided I wanted to be cool. Uh, so I went and flew helicopters. Uh, did that for 13 years. Um, and there was a point where my beloved looked at me and she said, you need to grow up and get a real job. Uh, so I transitioned into telecommunications engineering, which somehow landed me in cyber. And here I stand. So uh, let's get into this detection engineering. All right, so, you know, the idea here in engineering your de detections is so you're getting ahead of the adversary. And so I, I've got at least, I think there are two obligatory dead guy quotes in here, uh, both Sun Tzu. Uh, but the I idea here is, you know, victorious warriors win, then go to battle. Defeated warriors go to battle, then seek to win. So there's, there's some thought there. You, you've got to be prepared if you want to have the advantage in your given environment. And, you know, in security operations, information security or cyber defense, the advantage you have is that you're there first, or at least you're supposed to be. So how many of us have walked into a network that was built out of necessity and then some manager said, hey, go defend it? Yeah, right? Um, it's like the sad face of our lives, but that's it. So you've got to circle back on that, and you've got to figure out what your environment is and, and figure out how you're going to set yourself up for success. Uh, and that's where these ideas of a detection engineering process. I've got a process to actually build detections that are meaningful to the threats and to my environment. And we're gonna do that by taking the capabilities we have, figure out where our gaps in detections are, and then use some tooling, um, preferably one we're familiar and, and have an affection for, to close those gaps. All right, so knowing's half the battle, because I grew up in the 80s and I love G.I. Joe and that basically were the formative years of my life. So here's this, this quote from Sun Tzu. And the reason why it's always resonated with me is, is it gets after how do we wrap our heads around the current situation we're in. So if you know the enemy and know yourself, your victory will not stand in doubt. If you know the heaven and you know earth, you may make your victory complete. Now, we've got to translate that to modern times a little bit. Um, obviously, when this was written, Sun Tzu was looking at the world from a different uh, time and different place. Uh, the first sentence is pretty obvious. If you know your strengths, your weaknesses, uh, your capabilities, uh, your ability to maneuver, that's a good place to be. If you know that about your adversary, that's also a great place to be. Now, that second sentence is a little less clear. What was he getting after there? He's talking about the terrain and the conditions of the terrain. So if, if you were in physical battle, that would be, you know, I'm standing in a mountainous environment, I got forests, and there's a valley, and it's raining, and so that means something. In, in, the, in the context of cyber, that means something else. Not every network is the same. Not every network behaves the same. Not every network has the same purpose. So if we were to consider that in any given network, any given environment, there is probably somebody out there looking to gain something, information, money, or power, and there is a victim or a target from which they can gain that from. Uh, now that's pretty open, uh, and that probably means most of us, all of us in this room, most likely. So the idea here is in order to gain situational understanding, we must, you must know yourself, you must know your terrain, and you must know your adversary. And this allows us to make decisions faster, because that's what we really need, right? So when bad stuff is happening, you got management breathing down your throat, what is going on, and how do I make the bad things stop? Um, some call that the OODA loop, if you're familiar with uh, an Air Force concept, observe, orient, detect, and act, decide and act. Um, so that's, that's what a lot of this is about, and which is why in the, information security industry, we started having this conversation about detection engineering. So uh, I did a little bit of research, kind of digging around, trying to figure out what is detection engineering, where did it come from, um, and my Google foo led me to two places, 
well, lots of places, as Google does, but there were two big ones that resonated with me, uh, and they're represented in the two graphics on this slide. So the top one is from Gigamon, uh, which is why the color scheme might look familiar, and then the bottom one is from Spectre Ops. And, and what both uh, authors were really getting at is, you know, first, like everything else in cybersecurity, it's a process. Uh, it never ends. It keeps going to all infinity until you move on or somebody, somebody better comes to help you. Um, so we're going to start with, you got to start the process somewhere. You know, it, everything's got to start somewhere. So start with the threat template. Even if it's not the one you think you're currently being faced with. And that's what we'll do here. I'll walk through something where I've just picked something. For the sake of picking something, it gets you started in the process. You can work through it. And then as you learn, you'll make new decisions and, and tune that up. Now, you also have to understand your capabilities. What do you have? And that's kind of where this lower diagram gets, gets into the equation, is if you're a shop of one, how broad can your detections be? Do you have time to investigate all of that? Or is it worth it to engineer more precise detections that you can respond to quickly? Now, there's risk and reward there. Now, if you're a shop of 20, 30, 100, can, can that shop absorb less precise detections but with a higher degree of finding something shady going on? Um, and that's where knowing yourself is important and how you walk through this process. Uh, and then finally, uh, you got to start working with your capabilities and find those gaps. What am I not seeing? What's not being alerted? Um, and, and for the purposes of this, we're going to say alerts are the thing we're driving towards. So something discreet that immediately gives you attention so that you can focus your investigative time into that thing. Um, you know, and, and I would argue that that's kind of the output of threat hunting. Threat hunting, you're trolling around, you're looking for evil, and then you find it, and you go, hey guys, alert, something bad's going on. Well, we're going to automate that, or that's the goal, because computers go really, really fast, and no matter how much coffee I drink, I can't seem to keep up with them. All right, so we're going to do some wargaming, and I love this picture because that's exactly what wargaming feels like. It's depressing. Um, but somewhere, what you don't see in the pictures, there's some young person that had to build that terrain model, and they're like giddy with themselves because they spent three days building it, and it finally gets used, and then it gets thrown out at the end. Um, so my recommendation, don't do this live in production for the first time. Build a test environment that focuses on the capability you want to test. It replicates your capability for detection. Um, for this, I, I'm, I picked Wazoo for Windows endpoint detection with Wazoo. Um, that's, that's what I use at home because I'm a total nerd and I censor all of my kids' computers. Um, the threat template uh, I chose, so I used the MITRE ATT&CK framework and then I went out to this thing called the Atomic Red Team. Uh, it's, it's free and open by a company called Red Canary and it's got a fair number of discrete tests uh, that look like tactics from the MITRE ATT&CK framework, but don't actually, you know, cause damage to your environment. Uh, and they also provide the steps to back that out if you need to. Uh, and the, the other cool thing about it is it's got a PowerShell framework, so you can just run PowerShell commands, and I'll show, I just scripted it um, because I'm lazy, and it was easier for me to do that. Uh, you've got to see it. And we're going to use a, a capability near and dear to us to observe this event, uh, document what's going on, and then figure out how to close that gap. And that's why I highlighted playbook. And so we're going to use Security Onion to do this because, uh, you know, funny thing, it already leverages most of the things I've just talked about, and I'm just bringing in the Atomic Red Team to kind of drive uh, this event. Um, so cool little picture of what I set up. Um, it can be pretty simple. Uh, I, I'm running this one on my computer, so if you're a small shop of one and this is what you've got, uh, you can set up something small, work through your capability, and then take those detections you've engineered and push that into production. Uh, all right, so Windows endpoint observation. 
Uh, I wish I could say I was smart, and these were, I came up with this list of logs on my own, but that's not true. Uh, I went out to Sands, I pulled up a poster, I looked at the poster for about five minutes, and everything that looked like a Windows log, I, I underlined it and then put it on the slide. Uh, so that's how I came up with that list. Uh, I've, I found it to be really, really useful in finding bad things that are going on. So those are the Windows events uh, that I'm pulling in. Sysmon, a very popular capability for, for getting more information out of Windows. Uh, and I'm running the good old Swift on security rule set, uh, very easy to get and implement. And then finally using Wazoo to ingest those logs and then leverage the other capabilities of that host intrusion detection system. Um, so, so there's a lot you can get out of that. Um, in this particular case, I use the logs more for the detection. There is so much more you can do with Wazoo if you dig into that configuration file and figure out what else you can get out of it. Threat templating. Like I said, I use the Atomic Red Team. There are a lot of tactics on this slide. Um, for today, I'm gonna focus on one, Windows command shell execution of a batch file, and we'll walk through that and kind of what that looks like and then what the, the detection looks like on the back end of it. Um, but for small shops, this is something you can do, and it's already, like I said, there's a, there's a PowerShell framework for this. You can do this very quickly. Uh, in, a, in a test environment and then take a look at your capabilities and figure out what you're seeing, what you may not be seeing, and how to close that. I'm gonna use Security Onion 2 to watch all of this. A lot of data available if you're using Security Onion 2. So Suricata is giving me the NIDS alerts. Uh, Zeek is giving me uh, packet metadata events. Uh, Strelka is in there, so if you want EXIF analysis of extracted files, or if you want Yara uh, rule matches to occur, Strelka can do that for you. So that's another point where you can engineer detections based on a threat template you might have for your organization. Uh, Wazoo, we've already talked about, so that's the back end of it. And then Playbook, which we're gonna use Sigma rules uh, that will be driven by a last alert to give us that alert that focuses, uh, uh, focuses us very quickly on something that's going on. All right, so this is how it's gonna go. And, and I'm actually, I was inspired by Wes Lambert's uh, School for SOAR for people who don't know, know how to SOAR but wanna SOAR good and do other stuff too. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go through a demo uh, several of us have offered sacrifices. Um, I've prayed to the demo gods, and we'll see how this goes, because uh, sometimes they listen, and sometimes they like to put adventure in your life. Uh, so we're gonna use the, the Atomic Red Team to invoke this particular uh, tactic. Uh, I built a PowerShell script, and we'll look at that real quick, uh, and then we'll measure what happens. And so I, I created a somewhat arbitrary metric for measurement. Um, I recommend this because arbitrary metrics for measurement sometimes resonate with management. So if I can say to management, having been management at one point in my life, I started at 50 <laughs> and for very little money ended up at 75, and if you give me more money, I can get to 100, that's valuable. Uh, it improves our lives, it makes us happier, we're better human beings, more productive members of society. So having a metric is useful because then it's not just my opinion. Um, my beard is longer than your beard, therefore I'm right. Uh, I've used actual hard numbers. So let's see how this demo goes. Okay, I've gotten through step one, I can get to my screen. Uh, so we're staring at Security Onion. Uh, let me refresh this because I was, I was just looking at five minutes back. So this is, this is where we're starting. I've got no alerts, nothing's going on. Uh, not, not a lot's happening in this environment. And I'm gonna pull up PowerShell. I think it looks pretty good. I will clear that. So let's look at this uh, script I wrote. Uh, and, and so it's a super simple script. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this start transcript thing. So in PowerShell, you can take transcripts of what's happening in command line, push that off to a text file. So if, if you're running a lot of these, like say I wanted to run 10 tactics at once, 
I can start stop 10 different transcripts so that I have 10 different discrete things and then go through them individually. Um, because we're also going to take time snapshots, so you can go back into Security Onion, find that time window, reference the attack that you ran, and then make sure that you're seeing the alerts and the events that you wanted to see. Or that you should be seeing, because you might get in there and be like, I see nothing. Oh, that's bad. Okay, so what data, what data am I not collecting? What, what is missed? Am I not positioned right from a network perspective? Is my agent configured appropriately? for that particular tactic. Um, so below the transcript, we get to the, the time. So time is always important. Uh, so we're going to get the start. I'm going to run the attack. So that's the invoke atomic test, uh, the tactic number. And then each one of these tactics actually have like multiple test numbers. So this particular test uh, executes a batch script that's in a temp folder. Uh, and it's there, it, does, it doesn't do it, it, well, it does do something, it just uh, runs a directory walk of the C drive. Uh, and then we'll take the timestamp at the end of the test, uh, we'll stop the transcript, and then we'll write to the command line the time window. And I'm actually adding about two minutes onto it because if you're going to run this and then go right into Security Onion, it takes a little time to parse it. So you've got to be a little patient. So I added about two minutes so that I don't have to mess with the time picker and, and it's just there. Uh, so simple script, you can do this at scale. So like I think uh, my total template had 68 tests. If I wanted to script out all 68 tests, it's certainly possible. Um, I considered it, but it seemed like uh, it would be fraught with peril and opportunity for destruction. So I didn't, I kept it small. Uh, so at this point, this is, Pretty simple. So we'll see how well this goes. I'm just going to run it. It runs. All went well. I see no red in my terminal, so it means I did something right. Uh, and right here we have the timestamp. And I did some formatting to make my life easy, so I just copied that. And I'm going to come over here to my, my hunt interface. I'm just going to copy that time in there. I'm going to give it a second, and it's going to mess with me and not. There we go. Momentary sweating. So we have data. Something happened. Something good happened. Uh, and hopefully, uh, so I, I don't see any, any alerts in this uh, list of files, but we definitely have events. So I'm at that 50. We saw events. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to focus on one in particular. Uh, it's, let's see if I can zoom this in. I can. This Sysmon process creation. So let's, let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to include that in my filter. We're going to take a look at it. And so we see a couple of process executable, executables, PowerShell, command line, hostname, exe, and who am I. So I'm just going to expand this first one. And what I'm really curious about, so we've, I'm going to focus right in here. Parent command line. Here it is. Process command line. Right here at the end. There's the, the batch file that was run. OK, so we have an event. We have discrete observables in that event that now I can close an alert gap on and actually create something to say, hey, a batch file was run. Now, depending on your environment and the habits of your administrators and all of those other considerations, either you get a lot of batch files in your environment or you get very few. Um, nowadays, I would hope for few, but you never know uh, how far back somebody's Google foo goes. Um, so great, we've got something to start with. And, and this is where Playbook comes into our lives. Uh, Playbook is a capability that's in Security Onion. It leverages Sigma rules uh, to create queries that Elastalert will run against uh, data in Elasticsearch and then generate an alert for you in the alerts interface. Uh, there are a ton of open, free and open rules that come already integrated in Security Onion. I wrote one specifically for this to kind of highlight how um, doable this really is. So I've got this first one batch script execution, 
I'm going to expand the actual sigma rule. Let's get a little closer. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's, it's written in simple, simple language that's easy to understand. Um, so what are we doing with this thing? Uh, once we get through the titling and the dating, we can tag it. So I've tagged it with the MITRE ATT&CK um, appropriate tactic number and technique type. Um, we've looking for a log source category, so process creations out of the Sigma rule set or the Sigma log set. And I'm going to make a couple of selections. So in this particular case, I'm looking for PowerShell EXE in the image. I'm looking for the original, power, the original file name to be PowerShell EXE, and I'm looking for a process command line that contains that dot .bat. Uh, then I'm going to select all those conditions. I want to see all three of those, so there's no or statements, it's all and. I've got a couple of notes for false positives, so if we're looking at it, Okay, it still works. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll prove, because he wants to, to do that to me, is it still works. So there you go, still works. <laughs> See, instructors. Can't live with them, can't get rid of them. So there's your alert. And it, it Shows you it's from playbook, you know exactly where it's from, and I can use the, um, actually, Mr. Doug Burke should be proud of this development option, the quick drill down. I click on that number and I get a quick drill down, and now I can look at, yes, Mr. Doug did that. And you get all of the information available uh, for that particular alert. So we've sped that up. Now I didn't have to go in and hunt around and look at process creations and try to back out where this came from. Even though I wrote my conditional statement with an error and someone had to point it out for me in public because he's a good dude and a friend. Um, <laughs> but it is an effective way to go through with a template and start closing those gaps. Come on now. That's what I get for PowerPointing at the end of the day. All right, so uh, actually I'm impressed that demo survived pretty well. Uh, now that I'm through with it, I'm not going to touch it anymore because it'll go, it'll go south. All right, so, so what have we achieved? Uh, and it, it may feel like a lot, it may not, but we've, we've kind of wrapped our heads around um, the philosophy behind why we would want to do detection engineering, the, the ideas behind why uh, we need to understand the situation in our given network and the types of threats we might be facing because we're trying to drive decisions faster. Because um, if something bad is happening, you need to make quick decisions so that you can regain that initiative in your own home territory. Uh, we took some time to explore a way uh, to generate uh, attacks in an environment to see those gaps, and then we use Security Onion to, to see that and then close those gaps with Sigma rules as an example. Uh, there are certainly some other areas in there where you can um, add detections to Security Onion to give you those alerts. Uh, and, then, and so now, finally, uh, we can start to uh, defend our networks with, with a little bit more purpose. The idea is to get further away from an, a reactionary posture and closer to a pro, proactive posture. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, there is a lengthy and riveting white paper about this that was published in the SANS Reading Room. I encourage you, if you have 15 to 20 quiet moments, you can read through it. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, I did put a lot of this on GitHub, so there's a link right there. So all of those, um, the, the MITRE ATT&CK views with how everything got scored, how I built that, um, all of the invocation tests for Atomic Red Team that were run. Uh, I, I tried to leave it in a state where someone could probably scrape it pretty quickly and stand that up on their own. 
um, and, and run through this and get a feel for how it works and make a decision on how fruitful that would be in their own environment to start engineering some detections uh, beyond what comes baked into the platform. Um, so uh, I will stop there and see if there's any questions or constructive comments that aren't picking at me for making a small error in my typing because I was inspired by Wes this morning to make a live demo. Mr. Yeah. This. So, and, and actually, I'll, I, I have the comparison. Let me go back here. So, when I ran the full test for everything, I had about, what is that, 61.36% of coverage. So, the, the default Suricata alerts uh, created those alerts, and then I had event data for pretty much everything else. Uh, there was some event data available. Now, I went through after that, and I just turned all of those default Sigma rules on for Windows environment, because uh, that's what comes loaded by default. I just turned them all on, oh, except for one. There is one that you need to be really, really capable, uh, careful with. It uh, has a lot of regex in it, uh, so I think it's the Nishang, is that is the infamous Play 166? Yeah, so that will crush your box unless it's, it's a well-resourced machine, uh, so don't turn that one on. But when I did, I actually got to the big 100%. I had an alert for everything. Now, they're pretty wide open. So, I, I mean, it's, you're getting alerts for cmd.exe execution, you're getting alerts for who am I, and a lot of these atomic red team tests run all of those, but it was still pretty good for just clicking a bunch of check boxes and hitting go. Sir. So, I mean, that's yeah. No. No. Candidly, I did not, and that's that's what's at the end of the paper. Is you know, okay, great, I've succeeded gloriously, and you know, I should be exalted. But in reality, this needs a lot more study, because uh, just turning everything on, as we talked about that spectrum before, you know, that that volume of alert may not be appropriate for the size of the organization doing the investigation. Because um, I, I, it would have been fairly noisy, uh, especially if you have a large Windows environment and you have a administrative team that just has an infatuation with batch scripts. And who am I? Um, but abs that's a very, very good point. You've got to circle back on how noisy is this? Can I live with it? Was it effective? And sometimes they are. And, you know, what I found striking out of all of this is it really wasn't that hard to implement. It was so easy someone with executive in their job title could do it, um, which is, you know, that's pretty impressive for something that is free and open. So, all right. Well, if there's no more questions, I think I stand between you and his great Doug Burks. I'm sure my talk was boring enough that you will be nothing but riveted by the next discussion. All right, thank you everyone.